first of all, uh, I want to preface this by saying that the red team, which includes our Diablo, has a Zul, double support and a grey main uh, with Diablo. Uh, so the Zul is a perfect double laner. If we just take a look at how Zul works. If you take the talents uh, Tragul's ah, Essence, a familiar face. shut up. Uh, Tragul's Essence, you get infinity mana from a uh, lane. With Rasma's Blessing, you get infinity healing. So at level 4, and specifically at level 7, Zul becomes a very difficult lane hero to kill because of the healing. If you uh, get the uh, Shade, you're also almost com entirely mm -hmm. safe from Sorry. ganks of two or fewer people. One or two people, uh, or sometimes three, you can get away with the healing from the skeletons. And with shade if you want to be able to get away more often you can go for one of the other two with backlash being the best you don't get the cdr penalty but uh you can use it more often right but you don't get the auto attack block so it kind of depends on the opponent's team putting zul in the two top lanes of black Hearts bay with the trait uh ray skeleton gives a lot of push it makes it take a long time for other people to clear the lanes you give a huge xp boost to your team um, and uh, you're pretty hard to gank so in the meantime you put four people in the bottom lane what i don't like is to do that from level one onwards i don't think that's very strong so while i do think that you can gravitate towards four manning the bot and leaving zul top I think initially it should be the exact opposite. Uh, either you put Tassadar bottom solo or Zul bottom solo. And it kind of depends on the enemy team. So taking a look at this, we are going to be following the Diablo player. What is this? Picked? Wow. That's interesting. Wow, you see talent picks. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so the... Uh, the Diablo player is the person that we're following. He's the viewer who sent in the replay. And you can see that they're immediately doing a four-man bottom rotation. And I think that's weak. Because uh, if the other side plays it well, they can four-man top. And they'll be like, oh, it's only Zul. If he dies, you're now denied two lanes of experience. Whereas if uh, whoever solo bottom dies, you're de denied one lane of experience. So it is a weak play. But it is the play a lot of people tend to go with. So if you are the Diablo, you just have to go with it. So Zul is there. Let's see how much XP he gets or loses. First of all, we see that... Uh, uh, I do want to do one thing and I want to kind of lower the volume so that we don't have as much distraction from that. Uh, nice early kill by the Diablo. We're going to click him to take a look at his cooldowns and just see kind of what he can do. They notice that it is indeed the four-man bot, but here's my main ob here's my main objection to this type of strategy, right? You're four people here. You're literally waiting till next lane, because level one heroes are not strong enough to tank a tower, and moreover, due to the architecture of Black Arts Bay, you cannot stand here. If you stand here as a warrior, you take only damage from the tower of the bottom, not the top. But because of the narrow choke leading into it, you'll always take double tower damage, which is way too strong for any warrior except Chen to be able to deal with. Here it's different. You can put Diablo here, tank it, and attack with everyone on it. But here you're literally just waiting till the next wave, which is a terrible way to spend your early resources. So Zul is going to the top lane, but he's going to lose a lot of XP here in the mid, and that's why I don't like it. Moreover, when you send four people to one lane, you will sacrifice XP, and all that you'll be doing is just taking a chest and basically passing by three lanes without doing any structural damage. If they send four top, they will get a tower instantly. And that's why it's a bad strat. Having said that, there we go. Nice QE. Having said that, this is the play people tend to go with. So you just kind of have to work with it. In terms of talent picks, you've gone for Devil's Dew, which is uh, basically the best. And now you're in a 4v4. Zul and Leo are going to double soak each. Zul does beat Leo in that. So you have a winning matchup in the top lane. And it's just about here. I'm going to look at fights. See what happens. And sometimes maybe I will uh, rewind. I'm just going to point out that the major focus target here would be uh, Rhaegar and Malthael. 
uh, Tracer has a lot of mobility and can get away from you guys. But also, there is no follow-up for Diablo stuns. There is not a stun on the team, except if you position someone in front of a wall. So I would say your best bet to get a kill here is to prime someone to use your abilities to put them in front of Ariel so that she can detain and strike them into a wall. Uh, moreover, you want to make sure to group up as much as possible with your team to get heals from Ariel. After the heal, you want to split again so you don't take cocktail damage or mouth heals damage. Another thing I want to say in terms of draft, you don't have the favorable draft for team fight. Uh, Maltheo in particular is very good against double support comps, especially if he picks up the level 7 anti-healing debuff. And also because there's not enough burst to take down Maltheo fast enough. And you also have Diablo Zul, two frontliners, it's easy for him to get auto attacks off there and proc his trade. Still nice siege damage here, Zul is basically defeating Leoric in lane. And uh, okay. Small thing there, Diablo has a very big collision size and it's not just about using his abilities. Positioning properly to get kills is a very key aspect, particularly because you can choose on which side you want to put someone. Okay, damn dude, that took a long time. Hot's replays feels bad man, yeah. Okay, so uh, here's the thing, you're gonna end up flipping stitches into you if I'm not mistaken. Okay, at this moment, if he walks uh, up or down, you will body block him and he must die. Like, there is no way that Stitches should be able to get away from here. He walks bot, if you position yourself here right away, you just right click here, he's dead. And this is like a damn shame. You're just auto attacking him, you're expecting he will die. He does die in the end, but this is definitely something you should be on top of as a warrior. Moving on, you guys still have great push. You've got seven coins, they have nine because Tracer is farming all the doubloons. And at this point, I think what would be great is to start taking some mercenary caps, especially since the next wave isn't there yet. Holy damn, what happened to the map? <laughs> Why is there eye glues everywhere? What is this, Inuit town? <clears throat> Are we on Antarctica? <laughs> what the frack? How does that even happen? Anyway. Okay, you get the camp. That's great. Uh, also, if you can do vanilla siege damage on Blackguard's Bay, it's not even remotely important to stop the enemy turn-ins. <clears throat> People at all kinds of leagues get very hung up on stopping the balloon pay-ins. And what's more, people also get hung up on um, turning in sub 10 coin counts. And neither of that really helps. Like if, if they pay and they get like half your fort and the front wall, but you can do the same with a vanilla push, that's definitely recommended to just ignore the coins because they pay once, next turn in is gonna cost 12. So the more structural siege damage you can do without needing turn ins, the better. Having said that, you can win this map purely by getting XP from lanes, grabbing mercs and paying. If your wave push and your globalization is much better than the opponents, you can play it completely PvE. I'm not a huge fan of Zul dying and no one rotating up, but I guess you want to keep position, you're strong together, and you do have Bruiser and you get the push here. So what you've done here is already worth an entire pay-in. Now Zul dying, that's part of the problem when uh, he doesn't pick shade and he goes deep in the lane to push when he gets comfortable with that. Because Tracer, Tracer's good on this map because she can kill chests fast and she's a good ganker. So because Tracer's mobility far outstrips Zul, <clears throat> he died and he lost his coins. Still, you're in a fine situation. They pay, but you did more than a turn in at the bottom. I need a bit of water. This is where it gets hard. At this point, <clears throat> on Black Arts, not only is pushing into their keep going over a bridge that is kind of a death trap, 
but the opponent also gets a favorable engage on you if they choose to 5-man you. So for example, if Leoric starts walking down, he can walk diagonal down and then try to cut you off here. And your way back to the fort is fairly long. So it's generally not that attractive to push into keep wall. Yeah, I can see that you uh, flip uh, Maltheo again, but you don't take an attempt to body block. So it would definitely be my advice to focus a lot on body blocking. It's very easy in this game, actually. This game and Warcraft 3 have great body block mechanics. Um, as Diablo, doing good geometry, like good positioning, is very important. Anytime you can, like, I see that you have a lot of frontal uh, engage, like this. Like, you think in frontal terms, this is how Johanna plays. But as Diablo, you kind of want to be here when they are here. And you want to be here when they are here. Always try to push them into a wall. It buffs your damage and it uh, stuns them as well. And you'll never get that angling if you're uh, right in front of them. Very important. And remember, uh, push them into Ariel Detainment Strike. Now uh, you guys are still pushing in. And I don't think it's gonna... Uh, it worked, you got Tracer. Greyman got a bit... Uh, yeah. I think it could have been nice if Greyman didn't uh, die intentionally there. I mean, not intentionally. I mean, if he didn't, yeah, he walked a bit too far forward, he knows it. And that kind of ruined you guys, because now you lack the damage to uh, to dissuade them from doing this. So I don't think it was necessarily wrong for you guys to try and uh, play it in this manner. But you did pay for a personal mistake. Okay, luckily you didn't have 100 souls. Hey, that's interesting. Wow, Diablo had 91 souls. Someone dies, you got 100 souls. That is a bug, but it works in your favor. You got nine souls across the map because it still thinks of you as being dead on location here, as being part of the fight. That's interesting. Anyway, you guys killed them all. That was great. Uh, Zul died again as well. That's uh, Tracer's payoff. And at this time, it's really time to pay. Let's see, your talent build. Demonic Strength. You get the stun slow. Once overpower stun expires, the target is slowed. Okay, so alternative picks would have been greater engage range with your Shadow Charge. Which is not very useful because you have double support and they have a hard time to follow up. Uh, alternatively, you could have gone for Speed Demon. When you get stunned or rooted, you get bonus move speed. And that's not useful either. So good choice as a Soul Feast. Uh, I'm just gonna look at your vision here to get to get a bit of eye cancer. Never mind. Uh, apparently that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah, the the map did get a little bit bugged, so. Uh, never mind. No vision. So let's see. Heroics, Force Wall, Apocalypse, Aegis. Yeah, the problem here is the game plan is not evolving, right? Zul will die top lane anytime they want to because of Tracer. So uh, I would have actually liked to see you guys just group up as five. Blackheart's Bay is such a silly map that bottom lane is almost impossibly hard to soak. Look at your team. None of these five can soak bot lane and get away with it. So I would like you to see to see you just say uh, to suggest to your team like post level ten. Let's forget about bot lane. You already pushed the forward. There's nothing left to get. Uh, two lanes out of three is good enough for XP. Now if they truly are doing three lanes of XP, and you're only rotating as five the top two lanes, that would be quite weak, right? You get out soaked, but that's never gonna happen. Why? Because you have access to a fort and the boss. Now, both of you can pay. You have 11 out of 12 coins, and they have 15 out of 12. So I guess you could just have a random fight over mid. But I don't think it's such a big deal if they pay. You still are up a fort. So if they pay, it will fire cannonades at your top fort. Guess what? While they're paying, they're infinitely far away from you in top lane. So if you just go top lane and you five-man push the fort while they pay, that's a win for you. You still have your coins. 
you don't spend you don't uh increase the minimum amount of coins required to pay so before zul died again about 20 seconds ago i would like you to say just let's five man group let's go to the top lane group up and uh control the watchtower which will be great get the two lane soak maybe you get bruiser camp you push top if they show anywhere else on the map than where you are. If even one person shows in bot lane, you know you're 5v4, you can attack the fort, it's great. If no one shows, you just wait, you just double soak. Uh, or take the boss. Uh, because you have watchtower vision and you push the mid lane, the mid lane will show this whole line. So you'll always know when you get in ganked. Still though, you're going here and you're pushing in. It's, uh, it's pretty okay. Because you have nice pick off. Oh my god! Okay, this is scary. I like your apocalypse timing because it forces them to run and you guys are in trouble. And you still get Malthael. I don't know. Oh! Tassadar and Ario combined force wall with the Daemon Strike. So that's nice. Very nice force wall by Tassadar. Stopping him from gorging and running away. And with the minion wave coming, he was worried. That, yeah. The worry wasn't needed. You guys have so much push with the two camps. That this turns out to be very nice as well. But it works because you won the 4v4. And you've got a very strong 4-man. Uh, as good as Tracer is at ganking the solo laner, she's not as good in the 4v4. So you guys did make use of the fact that you have the better 4 versus 4. I like that. Now did Malthael take the healing debuff at 7? He didn't. That's a pity. I don't think slow does much for him. You guys neither have hard engage, nor are you particularly afraid of getting engaged upon because you have Tassadar Aria. So if he had taken the 50% healing debuff, I do suspect you would have had a lot harder time. It even debuffs your Devil's Do. But with this one, it's not nearly as bad. You guys go for the turn in. And Zul still versus Leo. I think that's fine. You're 4v4. I think you got hooked. Look at your abilities. Um, the next thing, the like the next best thing when you start a fight, it would be great if you were able to combo your heroic. One thing I've noticed with Diablo, he feels very much like a teamwork hero that is required to combo with his teammates if you don't function independently. By using, by turning on R, and I'm sure you know this combo since you're Diamond 2, but, but for those that don't, if you use Apocalypse and then you Q and E into a target, you flip them back into your own Apocalypse. And that makes up for exactly the 1.75 second stun delay. Uh, sorry for the... Yeah, the 1.75 second delay. And then you put them in your own stun. That's a great way for your team to follow up. So the way you're starting this fight is actually a little bit reckless. Um, after you E the Leoric... He's going to drain hope you. And they, you can get entombed, which will force a crystal aegis, which makes Genji, ah, sorry, uh, which makes Tracer able to take uh, Ariel out. And moreover, you also haven't looked on the minimap to see where Greymane is. So as the warrior, when you decide it's time to initiate, you want to do two things. You want to make sure that you initiate uh, in the right manner on the right person with a good initiation that makes it easy for your team to follow up. And secondly, you want to make sure your team is ready, that they're all there. So he's going to drain hope you, then he will entomb you, I suspect. He does drain hope you, and then the entomb, it's true. But they are actually playing off isolation. He goes for the putrid. You cast the uh, apocalypse, as I call it. Let's hope this hits, it doesn't. And that's why you want to try and combo it. So at this point it's like it's kind of like a brawl. I'm assuming you're pretty much just going to use abilities on cooldown. Uh, one thing I would say is, uh, yeah, try to see if your role is best spent killing someone or peeling for someone. In this particular case, if you walk like this and you try to queue Maltheo into the wall, that would be great. So here your role is going to. Okay, here you can actually. Yeah, it's hard. I think you did the right thing, trying to queue out, but you're probably gonna die. Oh my god. Yeah. So I think this fight could have been a, a win, if you make sure that you are the fight starter. Man, I really love Ariel Tassadar together, it's so sick. 
Yeah, this fight was both random and lost. Kinda lost, but then they split and they continued fighting. Of course, you cannot control your team. So I am giving team suggestions about rotations. But in terms of you, like the main two things I would say it has been uh, to combo your heroic and to angle the main three things combo your heroic angle yourself better with walls behind enemies and to combo your uh, apocalypse and i'll just kind of show it in a try mode i guess afterwards for people that haven't seen it before so you get mercs and like whenever you're equal talents but massively ahead on map push on black cards literally just go around grab mercs swarm the map and uh, pay over and over and over. That's the safest way to take out keeps on this map. If you're five versus three, by all means, go do structural damage in a vanilla fashion, just attack. But uh, 5v5, one level up, massively head on the map, catapult pressure, exactly like this. Yep, just five man around. No reason to split. This is so not needed. Now, he does know that there's nothing coming for him, but like in theory, Someone could like the whole group of them could be going like this, right? It's not very likely, but there is no reason to split in my opinion Like there is only one way you guys lose this and It's by splitting getting picked off and then dying in chain deaths. You're like literally 95% ahead on the map So you don't want to ever even get like you don't even want to give a 50 50 fight first of all Zul is mid, right? You're not grouped. It should be a mandatory rule to be grouped at this point just to reduce the chance of mistakes and secondly, 95% is a little exaggerated, but I would say you're 90% ahead on the map. Let's count your advantages. You've got Bruiser Camp push, Catapult push, Siege Giant push. You've got four forts versus one and a half, and you're up a level. If you do nothing and they do nothing, you win. If you go for their core and they go for your core at the same time, you win. If you both pay equal amount of times, you win. If you take half of your map of Mercs and they do, you win. Because eventually, like they will lose to Winion. So there's so many ways to win this game that the best way to lose it is what you guys are doing right now. Engage 4v5 in a fight that could go either way. If you win the fight, you will kill a keep and maybe the core. If you lose the fight, they will kill a keep and maybe the core. That's what I call a 50-50. So if the map is 80-20, don't take 50-50s. You run in. Of course, this is a smoke screen. You can't see it in the replay here. Again, you queue in, but you don't combo it. That's a very poor play because uh, they can just like take pot shots at you and your team is like, well, what are we supposed to do? We are back here, but you haven't really made anyone easily focusable. Moreover, they are also scared of uh, ganks by Rhaegar or Leoric. Of course, Leo shows on the map, but let's say he doesn't. They're afraid of flanks. And you haven't really done anything for the team. And then comes out the apocalypse and it's like, let's hope this one hits bless RNG. You guys win the fight handily. And okay. Now, absolutely outrageous that you guys go to pay. You should just end from bot. They have three dead for 30 seconds by the time you arrive. They'll still be dead for uh, at least 15. And it's an easy finish, especially with double support. Like this game should be ending right now. However, if you are truly very scared and you want to pay, there's still a better way to play it. Kill that half-life keep with five people. It's easier than the core, much safer, 100% value. You kill the keep, then you pay. That way you don't waste any cannon shots on something which you can touch with your hands. Instead, you will waste three cannonballs on a keep. And then this one, which is like out of reach for now, if you wanted to get a second keep, gets three cannonballs less. Just black hearts one on one. Again, you might think that you want to push the fort and your team might not agree because, you know, it's YOLO queue. Nonetheless, you can still try. You can say, five versus two, let's kill the keep. You walk there, halfway there when you're there, if you see team isn't following, fine. You go back, you can still pay, no problem. But it's worth trying to do that shot call, especially as the warrior. So, nice queue away on the minion. Uh, don't want to fight because you're not together just group up and probably uh, either with the boss or more pace you can just finish the game 
Also, you don't have heroic, so <clears throat> you shouldn't step towards enemy. You still have eight seconds. Uh, at this point, just tap your uh, apocalypse cooldown with shift click. Oh, yeah, anyway, you get a free Rhaegar, why not? I'm not saying it's wrong to like control the map, pay with coins forever. It's just that like when you get freebies, take them. Yeah, no real reason for you to stay there. You do get saved, but ultimately you should see it as an escape, of a, as a mistake, in terms of uh, in terms of like self analysis. Like this happens to me a lot. You get saved. You're like, oh nice, you know, I baited them, but. Technically, it's a mistake. So you guys end up winning the game. GG. P pay, please, pay, please, pay, please. Safer. FFS. <laughs> it's 50%. What more safer than freaking finishing it? 100% agree. 100% agree. You never know. Well, you never know what happens if you don't end the game. Uh, anyway, well played, Diablo BG. Uh, I hope you found it useful. And just to show you how to engage, I want to show you in the try mode. Uh, the best way to start a fight as Diablo, not just in Hero League, also in Pro Play, but especially in Hero League, you cannot you cannot 100% rely on your allies to uh, go with you or do like special kinds of combinations that do not involve Apocalypse Engage. So we set our level on 10, and uh, I guess we take the same talents that you had. Choose a talent. Uh, apocalypse. Choose a talent. Devastating charge. Uh, allied hero we don't want to have. So first of all, if you remember when you were formatting in the bottom lane, you always like this towards enemies. So what you want to do is like this. Threaten like this. They may know it that you are like liable to flip them into a wall, but that still poses more of a threat, more of a fear. And this is how to body block people. Imagine you're doing this. Of course, he needs to want to run away. Like, even though they know you're angling for optimal geometry to get the stunts into a wall, it's still more of a threat than standing in front of them. They know that if you stand here, the worst thing you're going to do is dive their team and get focused. Hey, Guabi, well, glad to have you back. Hope you enjoyed your time Guabi. at school. Thanks for the tips and the good vibes. Smiley face. No problem. Uh, so since the minions die, he will go back. I'll show you body blocking again. You can just hold down right, right mouse button, and that way you won't accidentally attack anything. That's better than like this, where you accidentally you'll attack. So hold down mouse button anywhere on the terrain, and then just have your character follow it, and then body block like that. Uh, now here's how to start a fight with Diablo. R Q E. And he gets stunned. Easy peasy. You basically disable them for two and a half seconds. First with your Q, then your E, and then 1.75 seconds of stun. That's basically how you want to start all the fights. Another thing you can do to start a fight is uh, E, and then Q, and then your body block. And look, he's stuck. He cannot leave. Oh, never mind. He is not stuck, it's just AI. So you body block, body block, wait till your E comes back, and then finally, you know, that's how you want to finish people. And your allies will continually get damage on them. So just uh, one more time, let's say, let's say you're gank ganking people here, right? And then uh, you expect that they're somewhere there. Let's say it's Infernal Shrines. You run in, and you're like, R, Q, E. And it doesn't work because it's a target dummy. Okay. Let's try like this. And then you start body blocking and your teammates will do maximum damage. One thing you want to watch out for is this. You see the range of Q? You don't want to be out of range. You want to make sure you're in range. Otherwise you'll miss it. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it, Diablo BG and everybody else. I don't often replay analysis these days, but I'm looking to do it a little bit more. So I hope anyone learned anything.
efficient hunter. So greedy. But look at their shields. Enemy slain. 